Subsidence is when voids that were left underground as a result of coal mining collapse and propagate to the surface. This can cause sinkholes, troughs, and other features. These features, when they develop at the surface, can cause damage to structures such as roads, utilities, and buildings, and other property damage as a result of strain and movement at the surface. Subsidence can occur anywhere in the state where underground coal mining occurred. Here's a piece of Colorado history right here. This is the coal cart and wheel pole assembly that was found in an 1860s coal mine in Colorado. We have a historic legacy of coal mining in the state for 150 years. It's left its mark on the land where development is occurring and people are moving into these areas at a very rapid rate. It's very important to stabilize the ground in these areas so that we don't have any more subsidence issues or to mitigate the problem or to avoid the problem by creating parks and such so that you don't have to worry about subsidence hazards anymore. So here we have an example of trough subsidence in an area of very shallow coal mining. Coal mining started at the outcrop at the top of the hill and then they came down in this direction where it got deeper. They mined the coal and then the ground collapsed right behind it. So as they mined along, the coal collapsed in this, in this feature. This area is completely collapsed, as you can see all the way to the trees over there. As the coal was mined, the overlying roof rock collapsed. And the shallower the coal mine, the more complete the collapse would be. So this is a great example of how subsidence can occur even over very old mines in an unpredictable manner. This looks to me like a fairly fresh subsidence feature. I can tell that it's fresh because of the, the roots that are not too terribly dried out and the, the vertical face of soil behind me. And we're not in a big slopey area, so it doesn't look like it's associated with a landslide or a glaciation. So I would, I would attribute this to subsidence. I'm standing in an older sinkhole. We're still over that old room and pillar mine. I can tell that this sinkhole is a little bit older because it's well vegetated. The slopes have eroded a little bit, so they're not quite vertical, but it's definitely a mining related sinkhole. And sinkholes, troughs, and other subsidence features that we see developing over historic room and pillar mines are a problem because when undermined areas are developed, subsidence features such as troughs and sinkholes can cause damage to roads, buildings, and utilities as a result of cracking, shearing, and other distortion in response to stress and settlement of the surface. Looking around, I can see construction going on and that worries me because we're definitely in an undermined area and building over abandoned mines and historic mines can cause damage because the features, the voids can collapse over time, propagate to the surface and cause structural damage and property damage as a result of collapse features such as this one developing at the surface. We're standing in an area that probably won't ever be developed and it's, it's a fenced in area and that's an appropriate use. We'd like to see undermined areas being used as parks and trails and low intensity, low density uses. I'm standing in a shaft of an old mine here in the Boulder Weld coal field. This would have been an entry to the mine, either for air circulation or for workers to get in and out of the mine. This particular shaft has been filled in. There's a monument here and it's fenced off, which is great. We love to see this because it means that we know about this shaft. It's unlikely that anybody would ever be allowed or want to build anything here. So this area that we're standing in is, is very distinctive of an undermined area. The topography is hummocky. That tells me that the mining here was pretty shallow. Subsidence has probably already occurred. Open space is a terrific use for topography like this for an undermined area. I'm standing at the opening, another opening to this mine in this shallow old historic mine. Could have been a shaft, could just be erosion of surface materials into the voids associated with the mine. So this area of shallow coal is also an area of coal fires. This coal historically was exposed to the surface, a lightning strike hit it, started a smoldering fire in this area, and the coal and the overlying rocks burned. The coal turns to ash. The overlying rocks turn to a rock called clinker. It's a baked and fused rock. So these coal fires are a hazard because they destroy the resource and they cause a hazard to the overlying homeowners. 
So a coal fire, of course, is a place where you don't want to build a house because the underlying coal seam expands and burns additionally to the area that, it, that it's in. So 70 million years ago, this seaway was here. As the seaway disappeared, it left rivers that flowed that had left ripple marks preserved in the last preserved direction of, of flow. So after the ocean retreated, it swamps, ferns, and dinosaurs in the coastal plain behind it. And this is where the coal form. It compacts over time by the, being buried by overlying sandstones and shales of a, of a river terrace area, forms coal-fied rock right here. This piece of coal right here actually preserves the original structure of an old tree. We're in the Mine Subsidence Information Center at the Colorado Geological Survey. This is a repository for all of the available historic coal mine maps and subsidence investigations that have been completed here in Colorado. So this is our collection of historic mine maps. These are mine maps that were required to be filed by coal mine operators prior to when permitting began in the 70s. So these are all historic coal mine maps. This is the best record that we have of where the mining occurred and where the subsidence hazards are now. Another resource that we have here in the Mine Subsidence Information Center is a comprehensive collection of subsidence investigations that have been completed by developers and consultants to characterize mine workings and voids and the subsidence hazard in proposed development areas. The Mine Subsidence Information Center library is used by lots of different people. We have developers and their consultants coming in, county and municipal planning departments to help guide master planning, oil and gas mining companies to provide information about subsurface conditions they may encounter during drilling and to guide future exploration efforts. Banks, realtors, and prospective home buyers use our data to help make wise purchasing and lending decisions. And homeowners call and come in on a regular basis asking for help identifying potential causes of observed damage. We've put together a number of publications and resources that people can use to help identify hazards and understand subsidence and subsidence hazards. One item is this trifold brochure, Mind Subsidence, What, Where, and When. We have a Rock Talk, one of our semi-regular publications. We have a publication, SP26, called Subsidence Above Inactive Coal Mines, Information for the Homeowner, a database of all the known historic coal mines in Colorado. We have a lot of information about coal regions and coal mine locations and undermined areas digital, available digitally on our website and you can come in and use our um, kiosk here to view subsidence events, the green diamonds, coal regions, and statewide undermined areas and investigate specific mines or areas of interest that could possibly be undermined. This is an example of mine workings from a mine up in the Boulder Weld coal field superimposed on the aerial imagery. So we can now take and superimpose these, look at proposed developments relative to known mapped workings. What can we do to reduce the risks associated with subsidence? We can avoid undermined areas. We can plan and zone low intensity, lower density uses, a park or a trail or an open space. We can do a subsidence investigation that involves drilling and possibly a little bit of geophysics to characterize the condition of the mine workings, design foundations to withstand the stresses associated with possible subsidence, orient foundations in a way that reduces the strain that they're exposed to. Subsidence affects all of us in Colorado.